Welcome back to Freight Waves Now. Michael Vincent, you and Andrew just finished talking about this crazy market that we live in. Yes. Costs are rising, costs are falling, everything's volatile. volatile. Yes, so when it comes to transportation spend, we've got to talk about optimization, right? Yeah, we absolutely do. Yeah, and we were just talking about carrier costs mm -hmm. and uh, those rising. Uh, fuel as a percentage of, of revenue is actually dropping, but fuel costs are up. But insurance really, really high. Right, and so that's our topic for this next guest. We've got Dave Giblin with us today talking all about the ways that you can really kind of make your spending more efficient. Dave, welcome to Freight Waves Now. Hey, uh, glad to be here, guys. Really appreciate the invite today. Yeah, of course. Hey, good morning, Dave. Uh, so, Dave, you are SVP of operations at ODW uh, Logistics, correct? So, let's take a. We're going to talk about costs and, and optimizing, and it, from the shippers' perspective, correct? That is correct. So, uh, you, you know, you guys have been spending a lot of the show today talking about uh, mitigating carrier costs. We hear a lot from you guys about. Uh, working through carrier relationships, obviously a, a critical thing in our industry today. Uh, and what I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking to you about today is uh, shippers shipping smarter. Uh, so better utilizing the trailer capacity and, uh, and, and leveraging everything they've got within their own four walls to, uh, to somewhat avoid the LTL network. Uh, you've got several carriers out there that have had some significant capacity issues. Some of them have take, taken measured approaches to, uh, to that. Others have taken more drastic measures to, uh, to uh, mitigate through some of those capacity issues. So we'd like to share some ways that you can combine technology, people, and processes to, uh, to better optimize the uh, supply chain out there. And so let's hear about some of those ways, because if you're a shipper, you can kind of get set in your ways of doing things, right? And you're like, I'm spending this money, I'm going to spend it anyway, so why bother changing what I'm doing right now? What do you think shippers could change to make them more efficient and to cut those costs just a little bit? Sure, you know, I'll share some, you know, you could uh, start small and get big. A lot of the largest shippers have the most difficulty optimizing freight. They've got a... Uh, They've got a, a process that's down, it's automated, their carrier tender process is, is already set, their method of load building is set. Uh, and they oftentimes, as an example, if you're shipping from Ohio out to California and you have two half truckloads, they could ship a half truckload in the morning to San Diego, a half truckload in the afternoon to LA and not realize that they could have combined those two shipments. Uh, so, you know, uh, we, we oftentimes see that it's the smaller shippers that recognize that recognize those opportunities out there because they've got four shipments during the day. They're not going to miss the two shipments that are going to Southern California. They put them both on a truck and voila, they've saved themselves twenty five hundred bucks, uh, improve the carbon footprint for everybody that the driver doesn't mind uh, uh, doing an extra uh, delivery stop. And, you know, really everybody wins. So, um, you know, from from that perspective, you uh, you know, really, the the keys are to to have a uh, a TMS with the capabilities of uh, recognizing those opportunities that have you, your uh, carrier relationships set to be able to to handle those additional uh, stops either at the pickup end or the delivery end, uh, and and from that you know from that area just uh, rock and roll uh, through through the opportunities. Yeah, so Dave, you're talking about something a little bit different than uh, setting up, say, milk runs across the, the country. I don't know if everybody understands what a milk run is. Most probably do. Maybe you can explain that a little bit. But you're talking about closer to a traditional uh, like, uh, like pool distribution or zone skipping, right, where you have a shipper that may have several shipments, three or four, five, six, even maybe 30 that go even LTL normally from East Coast right. to West Coast, but if you can ship all of those on a Thursday, your average delivery time and service is pretty much going to be the same because you got the weekend to calculate it, right? Yeah, 100% uh, works both ways throughout the country. Generally speaking, the longer the haul, the more benefit you're going to get from this optimization, the smarter shipping. Uh, so um, what what we do uh, is is we run daily plans. We do our best to work with the destination locations to make sure that that appointments uh, can line up appropriately. And you, know, you, you mentioned the LTL. This can uh, this can spread across most modes of transportation up really until you get to the full truckload. So we you know we take parcel and and we zone skip parcel and we'll put LTL freight on that same trailer. So really anything that's smaller than a truckload. Uh, we're looking for the most optimal ways of moving it across the country. 
uh, oftentimes that ends up delivering into a regional parcel carrier or regional LTL carrier to make that final delivery. Other times, if it's a, if it's a big slug, call it a half or quarter truckload, we're, we're making those deliveries direct uh, to, to the destination locations. And so Dave, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about how to optimize your costs when you're playing the spot market. We've got a lot of volatility, depending on where you're going, your spot rates are elevated and everything's elevated right now, of course, yeah. you know, and it's that volatility in that elevated state. What are some strategies that shippers can employ to really make the most out of being on that spot market and, ha spot market and having to utilize that as their strategy? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, you look at the last 18 months and it's been a, a wild ride from a spot and contract carrier perspective. You know, what, what we look at is is trying to, you know, optimize the, the current situation. So, you know, if you look back at 2018, optimization is something that we do a lot of. However, uh, at the time, LTL contract rates had not caught up to uh, truckload spot rates. So it actually made a lot more sense uh, to continue shipping LTL, that switched in 2019 uh, to where you got into a you know, in an area where spot rates became depressed. It became more enticing to mode shift from LTL from parcel up into a into a higher category multi-stop truckload or pool distribution type of strategy. So really, for us, it's about leveraging tools like sonar, leveraging other market indicators out there to understand. Where are rates? Where, where's our contract rates? You've got to have those loaded into, into the system. You've got to understand if your carriers are accepting those rates. And from a spot perspective, being able to be nimble. I, you know, one thing that's very difficult in uh, load building is if you're planning to do a three-stop delivery truckload and something changes, either one of those orders potentially grows to the point where you've got now more than a truckload or potentially one cancels. So now you're stuck with two thirds of a truckload. You know, those are areas that you need to be nimble. You need to have good systems. You need to have good carrier relationships that, so that you can work with other options. Hey, our San Diego canceled. We've now got a third stop in LA carrier. Can you, can you handle that type of thing? So you need to be on your toes, need to be nimble, but uh, you know, all, all things that we're used to in the, in the supply chain world, right? Yeah, absolutely. So Dave, I mean, it, it sounds great, and I've played in this arena myself from the asset provider uh, doing the, the zone skipping and almost pool distribution type of stuff, and it, it's excellent stuff because you can provide a, a, you pay a much cheaper rate to send a full truckload than to send, say, 100 shipments that are class rated through an LTL network, right? Uh, but but there's also a lot of other benefits that go along with that, like uh, all your OS and D, right? Your overages, your shortages, uh, which you know I always argue there's no such thing as a shortage. It's overage, theft, and and damage, right? Uh, because somebody's got it somewhere. Right. Uh, but, but so all those different handlings are taken out of it as well. What are the obstacles? Uh, what are some of the hurdles or the the, the pitfalls that are out there that? Uh, that shippers need to be aware of and, and, and talk to really an expert before they try and set something up like this? Yeah, so so there's a lot of variables. Uh, lead time on both ends is is important. So if you've got some flexibility at the front end, uh, that being on the, the ship window. So if you've got two or three days, you, know, you mentioned earlier, load up on Thursdays. That's not always a possibility. The, the shipping location can't always manipulate days. If you're a manufacturer, that is oftentimes the number one priority is we're gonna manufacture uh, based on our, our manufacturing schedule, and we're not as concerned about the, the end of the delivery schedule. So that's something that we work with shippers on a regular basis to try to understand their process and get the right systems in place to, to be able to, to work with, uh, within their process and potentially help to adjust their process uh, to take massive benefits uh, uh, and, and give them back to the shipper. Excellent stuff. So um, do you work with uh, not only your systems, but do you work with setting up those partners for the final uh, for the for the for the opposite end delivery and those those providers? Or are you are you setting up the systems to be able to do this? Do you do you take guidance through that with a shipper that wants to do this type of thing? Yeah, it's a great, great question. Cradle to grave, really. You know, most shippers are not set up to uh, to, to handle this on their own. They're interested in, in the uh, the carrier capacity, uh, uh, providing the capacity. They're interested in really everything uh, throughout the supply chain. So from setting up the original shipping appointments 
on through to the uh, to the delivery appointments and, and the schedule uh, really cradle to grave. And it's really, you know, there's there's so many details to work through that it's it's very uh, challenging for uh, additional intermediaries to, to be involved. Dave, well, thank you so much for joining us this morning on Freight Waves. Now, if people want to get in touch with you at ODW, where should they go? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, first thing, I'd go to odwlogistics.com, find us there. Uh, you can find my information on the website. Uh, you can also check me out at LinkedIn. Just uh, just look me up at Dave Giblin ODW, and, and you can find me there. Great. Thank you so much for joining us again. Great talking to you, and have a good rest of your day. Good deal, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, it's interesting stuff, mm -hmm. and it is a very complicated thing. Now you're, you're starting to, look, we always talk, and Zach and I always talk, you can't marry those two. Right. But what if you can? here's an exception. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what if you could? <laughs> All right? So, yeah, you definitely need an expert when you're trying to do that stuff.